Hey guys, welcome. My name is Nate, and in today's video, I would like to show you how to determine the speed of the homemade silver gelatin emulsion that I showed you how to make two weeks ago. Today, I finally have uh, constant light conditions with completely blue skies, and uh, there is actually a few different ways you can determine the speed. Big film manufacturers are using specialized machines for that purpose, but obviously, we don't have access to them. So today I'll rather show you a DIY technique of determining the emulsion speed by using a step wedge. I have already coated some 4x5 glass dry plates with this uh, homemade emulsion, so we are almost ready to go. Step wedge is a series of density increases in uh, regular steps that can range all the way from transparent to opaque. In photography they are most commonly used with the enlarger to establish a uh, processing and uh, exposure adjustments and to determine the speed and density of uh, photographic paper. We're gonna use it in the same manner today, but instead of paper, we're gonna determine the speed of a dry plate. You will need a dry plate, unexposed of course, a uh, light meter, I'm helping myself with my phone using a light meter free app, darkroom chemistry, and the last but not least, a plate holder which has to be modified a bit, so let me show you how. Take an empty holder, I will be working with Zebra dual plate holder that I just released last week and it's linked below as well. Then with a dark slide inserted all the way, take a sharp object or in my case a pencil and mark how much of the slide is inserted in the flap. Then copy that measurement to the top of the slide. Then measure the image cutout which is in my case 12 cm and divide it in as many steps as you want to have on your exposure wedge. I want to have six, so each of my strips will be exactly two centimeters wide. When you have all the lines, you can also number them down if you want. Now you can uh, finally load the plate into the holder. Following the Sunny F16 rule, the exposure time for ISO 1 is 1 second, for ISO 2 half a second, for ISO 3 third of a second and so on. But the shutter in my lens doesn't allow me to set the exposure time to let's say 1 third of a second. So I will rather close my uh, aperture down for another two stops to F32 and uh, work with full seconds. Now you need to ask yourself what is the estimated speed of the emotion you made. I made many emulsions like this before, so I know that uh, the speed of my emulsion will be somewhere around ISO 3, meaning I will put this value in the center of my 6 step wedge like this. If it's your first time doing this, feel free to extend your ISO range from ISO 1 to ISO 15, leaving, I don't know, 3 ISO values in between each step, and then go into more uh, detailed uh, ISO range from then on. Above ISO 3 we will add in exposure times for ISO 4, 5 and 6 and below ISO 3 for ISO 2 and ISO 1. What kind of subject? Ideally it should have everything from mid-tones, deep shadows all the way up to very strong highlights distributed evenly throughout the whole scene because when you have your step wedge you can observe the whole zone in each step plus you can uh, compare one step to the other. It's a very windy day today, so I have selected this vintage window shutter that will fill my frame nicely and stay still through this whole process. I am using F32 for all the steps and by changing the ISO setting we will get the exposures. I am metering with my phone using an app called Light Meter Free that lets you insert custom ISO range, which is pretty cool. Starting with ISO 1 it metered 12 seconds. With ISO 2 half of that, so 6 seconds, with ISO 3 4 seconds, ISO 4 3 seconds, ISO 5 2.5 seconds, and for ISO 6 2 seconds. Now that we know exactly how much exposure we need for each ISO, we can arrange it in our chart in a way that at the end we will have correct exposures in each step. If you have a chart in front of you like this, it's much easier as you just need to calculate the time difference between each step. So let's go, 12 minus 6 is 6 seconds, so this will be our first exposure. 6 minus 4 is 2 seconds, 4 minus 3 is 1 second, 3 minus 2.5 is 0 0.5 seconds, 2.5 minus 2 is again 0 0.5 seconds, and for the last exposure we will leave it as it is, so 2 seconds. 
Now you can also check your math and add up all values top to bottom and uh, you should get the exposure time of your lowest ISO which is in my case 12 seconds. Yeah, now we finally have everything set to make the exposures. Using the chart we just created we can now make a step wedge. Set everything up and make sure that your camera is very sturdy. I pull the wedge out to the first line and expose for 6 seconds. Then I pull it out another step and expose for 2 seconds. Then 1 second, half a second, another half a second. And I pull the dark slide out all the way and make the last exposure at 2 seconds. I have to say I'm very eager to see how this emotion works, so let's turn off the lights and enjoy the magic. It's important that for all of your tests you work with the same concentrations and developing times. Just like with zebra plates, I will develop in a Kodak HC110 dilution B for uh, 5 minutes, wash in uh, tap water for a minute, fix in a rapid fixer for 5 minutes or until all the milky areas are gone, and then final wash in normal tap water. It's important that you keep all the solutions at the same temperature. I'm keeping um, everything at 20 degrees Celsius or uh, 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Once I put the plate into the developer, you can immediately start to see the negative image starting to appear in the upper section with the lowest ISO value and the rest will follow shortly. Then I wash it for one minute in tap water. And then fix, during fixing make sure to turn the plate around time to time to check if all the white areas are gone. When the plate is completely clear let it fix for another minute just to be sure that all of the unexposed silver halides are removed. Ok, our step wedge negative is now developed. Let me move this tray away a bit. I'm glad to say that my assumption of the ISO was quite good. You can clearly see the, the exposure strips ranging from ISO 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So from the brightest to the darkest. You can also see that uh, emulsion lifted off a bit on the edges, meaning that uh, I can add a bit more chrome alum during um, my next coating to make the emulsion more resilient to development. So yeah, it's not right now it's not the time to make the final assumptions as this plate needs to dry completely. I will uh, digitalize it then and uh, show you the results. After the plate has dried, I digitalized it and inverted the colors in Photoshop. Looking at the plate, you can see that at ISO 1 the window shutter is way overexposed. And the same goes for ISO 2. With ISO 3 things are starting to look decent, but it still looks a bit overexposed. ISO 4 seems good and so does ISO 5 being a bit darker. And the last ISO 6 seems to be too dark already, at least for my taste. I was deciding between ISO 4 and 5, but at the end I went for ISO 4, meaning that the speed of my emulsion is ISO 4, at least in the spring with direct sun. Why just in the spring? Because this homemade emulsion is sensitive to blue-violet and ultraviolet light, meaning it can record the spectrum of light that our own eyes cannot see. And especially the values of UV light can range from season to season, from weather to weather, and also from altitude to altitude. Therefore, in order to get more detailed and exact speed chart of your emulsion, you should uh, make an exposure step wedge with the same object different times through the year, ranging, I don't know, from January to December, so each month, by uh, maintaining the same position of the object, the same time of the day, the same light conditions, which will probably be the sun, and also the same developing times. There you go, I hope and wish you found this video useful, if you did please don't forget to press that like button as there is much more chance for the others to see this video as well. And as always if you have any questions or any extra tips to share with all of us, please leave them in the comment section down below. 
And to everyone who already ordered or would like to order Zebra dry plates or the new Zebra dual plate holder that I've been using in today's video, I would kindly ask you for a bit of patience as I got many orders at once and there is more than 95% of handwork. I wish everybody a nice week and catch you guys in the next one. Bye!